The SEC Art Department typically has two events every year. One is an art show and the other is an art sale. And your assignment is to create a flyer that will promote either one of these. So you get to choose. If you come up with something that could work for both, that's great. If you come up with something that you know really makes more sense for a show, art show, if you come up with something that really makes much more sense for a sale, then great. Like, for example, if you came up with a clever way to use uh, like artistic dollar signs, then that probably wouldn't work for the show. But you would have a good chance of getting selected for the sale and vice versa. So let me go over the project. I'll show you some past examples and we'll go from there. So you want to create a flyer. Your target audience is both college students and college faculty. In fact, most of the work purchased at the sales are from uh, fellow college faculty. Um, the show is a mix of faculty and students. The front of the flyer should attract your target audience and let them know that there is either an art show or an art sale. Um, and the reason I'm lumping these two together is they're basically identical. They're on the same size card with the same format. The content in the back just would require a little bit of adjusting. So you decide which text you want to put on the card, whether it's art show or art sale. Um, your concept or design, like I said, might be perfect for one or the other, but it has happened in the past where a student put art sale on their card Another student's card was chose, or flyer card, flyer, um, was chose for the art sale. Um, but the other one was just equally awesome, so we just changed the name to Art Show and used it as well. The format. The flyer is a double-sided card that measures 8.5 by 5.5 inches. And just FYI, that is an exact letter size a paper that is folded in half. If you're looking to do some doodling, that's a great way to get started. The flyer can be oriented is uh, or um, landscape or portrait. So in other words, it could be five and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. And then the text on the back could go either way as well. More traditionally, it would be the landscape format for the text on the back. But either way, if you come up with a great idea that supports um, the non-traditional, then by all means, give it a shot. The flyer has a required one quarter inch white border all the way around on both sides. You can also think of this as just a non-print area, meaning that there can be no ink coverage in the last quarter inch all the way around the card. But it does not have to look like a border. So if you were using a white background, um, we might not even notice that there was no ink coverage in the last quarter of an inch. Uh, and I'll show you a document set up to help you with this, just in case that didn't make sense to you. Um, the design in the final file. You create your design, or I should say you can create your design with either vector graphics, meaning like it could live exclusively in Illustrator, or bitmap images such as uh, Photoshop or a painting program. Um, if your image has recognizable people in it, so in other words, if you use photography or super realistic um, other means, um, they must sign the RSCCD photo release form, which is, uh, you have an attachment to that right here. Um, your final product will be an Illustrator. So that means if you created your graphics in Photoshop or similar, you will place it in Illustrator. Um, and then we always, like 99% of the tack, uh, time, do our text in Illustrator. Only if it's incorporated right in the image is it ever done in Photoshop. Otherwise, the professional way to set text is Illustrator or in some cases, if it's a continuous document, Adobe InDesign. Follow the directions um, in the, what should be familiar with you right now, the uh, Turn In Files number one video that's on this linked page here. And then you will turn in a folder that is created by doing a package in Illustrator, which I will also show you. Um, you test this folder by moving it onto another folder or area of your computer, re 
boot open the AI file and make sure that everything comes with it. Once you have created the folder, you simply right click on it and select compress. It becomes a zip file and that is what you ultimately load to the link above. The required content on the card, um, there is inside of a zip folder that I will provide to you. In fact, let me just show it here right now before I get on to too many things that I have to remember to show you. Okay, so I'm going to go to um, an announcement that you would probably be assigned for this week. So somewhere in the weekly assignments you will see a link to this art show sale uh, zip file. You simply click on that. It downloads probably over here or into your downloads folder. And once you uh, double click on the zip file, it just becomes a regular folder. And inside of that folder, you have a couple starting documents. So first one we'll take a look at real quick here is the art flyer starter. So this is your starting document in Illustrator. Uh, and I did this just because there's a little something here I think will, well, two things that will help you out. One is you have a whole bunch of information here for the college, including all the different ways you can set up the logo, even against a dark background. You have the official colors of the college listed and put here on the document. And also um, you have the um, swatches, uh, so Pantone 282C and 116C are the official colors for the college. So if you make something and you want to color them in with that, you would just simply, let's see, make sure we got a layer to work on here. Let's say you were making, want to make the whole background that color, for example. You could just simply click on that Pantone color. And then not only those things, but I also put the border in here for you. So for example, let's say that you had a photograph that was, I don't know, say you wanted to put the photograph on there and this represented your photograph. I made a layer on top that contains the required borders. So if you went to move this to the corner of the document, you would see that it forces you to keep that one quarter of an inch border on there. So all that is simply is if you were to unlock my layer and select it, you can see I just made a white border that's one quarter of an inch all the way around. But I would suggest you leave that locked um, unless you need to unlock it to get at any of the information over here and then just lock it up again. Okay, and then let's go back to the instructions. Okay, so once you open up that flyer, you can see all the additional information that was contained there. Um, and there is also all the wording for the flyer. And you can get creative with the wording on the front of the card. Um, as you'll see when I show you the examples, they don't all just say art show or art sale. Sometimes people include additional information from this document just because it either just balances the card out better or it just helps the concept, the idea that they have for the flyer. But at a minimum, the front of the card should say art sale or art show. I got to correct that. So front art sale, art show, or anything that helps the concept can be added to it. Um, the back of the flyer, if you are an art 122 student, you are not required to work on the back of the flyer. Just Give your best shot at coming up with something awesome for the front and if yours is chosen not only will they print out a whole bunch of copies and you're welcome to some copies for your portfolio um, but we'll also come up uh, with the back unless you want to try if you have time to try the back it's a great exercise in hierarchy just go to this file here look at all the information that's required put it on there and go for it if you are an art 221 student then you are required to do the back of the card in either way just make sure that you put all of this information on including if you're an art 122 student designed by your name art 122 um, and for art 221 your name and art um, 221 um, there is not a font requirement per se for the card but just consider that on the back, the logo must be on the card and that FCC's official font on that logo is Frutiger. 
and their other font is Clarendon. Um, so you definitely don't want to compete with that. Um, and let's see, good hierarchy would be essential if you're given the back um, uh, an attempt for the 122 students and um, the board of trustees and the chancellor information that is in that document uh, is required, but it can be quite small. They even say as, as small as seven points. And that is pretty much it for there. Let's look at some past work. And here you can see is the one quarter inch um, border. And obviously this one is for the art show. Um, and I'll, I'll zoom out on these as well. They're showing you up close. Um, in case you're not well versed in art history, this was a parody of the work that Andy Warhol did. So therefore it made a nice attraction for educated college professors and also art students. Uh, you know, it would definitely capture your attention if this was posted on the wall. You'd go up and next to it would be posted the back of the card. Um, and you can see this one um, was portrait style on the front and landscape on the back. So if you're thinking about designing the card or you're required to because you're a 221 student, this will give you some inspiration for the backs of the card. Um, this was one that was very nicely conceptual because a lot of times paint brushes and things like that are overdone but this was done in a way that really made sense because it says it's time for the student art show and there's the back of the card now notice this one did not have a, a quarter inch border around it that became a requirement after you know this was done back in 2014 but you can bring graphics back into the back if you like this one was a parody on that old school um, art, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that old school um, postcard, you know, back into the 50s, that kind of wish you were here type postcard. And there's the backside she kept with the parody of the postcard feel. Um, this is one that was done in a painting program. So here's an example of one where you can't even tell that there's a quarter inch border around it. It just looks like a lot of white space. And there's the back of that one. Here's another one going for the parody of, um, you know, the wish you were here. I think that was inspired from the other postcard, but then um, not to go too much into this, but Pink Floyd, uh, popular album. This was the graphics on one of their albums. And then the second album they had was actually called Wish You Were Here. So kind of the idea was to, you know, maybe appeal to the um, college professors that might be going there that were hippies when they were kids and <laughs> no, I'm just kind of kidding about that but um, this one here was one that I did one year and it this one does not have the quarter inch border on it but the idea was that this would be one continuous display so you could take the back line it up against the front and then put another front and then a back and then a front and then a back and then over and over it would just keep saying SEC art show but then it would also say heart and wow on it and then if you read the fine print it says something like wow the heart really shows in the art at SEC so um, I'd ha always wanted to do something that was continuous like that um, anyway so hopefully that gives you some good ideas of possibilities obviously you don't want to copy any of these just kind of use the whole like um, idea as inspiration for concepts that you can come up with so it's a pretty straightforward project um, just make them uh, don't make the mistake of not leaving adequate room for either art sale or art show on the front of the card hit us with a great concept you know as we've been talking about the verbal plus the visual equals the message so let's say the verbal was art sale or it's time for the art sale like you know in that one example which obviously has already been done but you know something like that that's clever then the visual then the message that's great but also this is one of those rare instances where just pure eye candy can win you just put something on that card that's irresistible to look at you put art show or art sale and you could have a winner there and as with every assignment, as you're working on it, you know, look at the, the required information that's here, even if it's just a process check. Um, and then definitely before you turn it in, look at what I'll be looking for on the uh, rubric, the grading rubric, which is mostly grading your design 
and then also making sure that you give me the adequate tools if yours should be chosen, uh, chosen and go into production. This is absolutely essential now, not just a grading item.